everybody. Welcome back to Furniture Flipping Teacher. I'm Lauren, and this is going to be a recap of the 12 days of Flipmas. If you're new here and you're not sure what the 12 days of Flipmas is, I was able to flip 12 pieces of furniture throughout the month of December, and I am going to be telling you exactly how I did that in this video. We're gonna be going through the process as well as the profit. Let's get into it. On the first day of Flipmas, I flipped this rundown dresser that I found at Goodwill for $45. First thing I did was took out the hardware and I gave it a nice clean. This is really important so that you make sure to get all that dust and dirt off of the surface. Then I took my surf prep sander with an 80 grit sandpaper and I stripped back the original finish. After that, I began to cut the lattice pieces to frame out each drawer. I found a curtain at Goodwill and repurposed it to become the fronts of the drawers. I painted it and cut it to size to stick to the fronts. While that was drying, I went ahead and painted the whole dresser with Boss, which is a stain blocking primer, since there was definitely going to be bleed through on this piece. Then I went ahead and cut the curtain to size and did a paint wash on the lattice pieces to take out some of the yellowing that's generally in pine wood. I did a paint wash with the color Burlap from Dixie Bell Paint Company and then I wiped it back. I did this for the top and the sides of the dresser. After I stuck the curtain onto the front of the drawers, I used a brad nailer to attach the lattice and I filled the holes with wood filler in a natural color. I used a satin top coat to protect the surface of the entire dresser, including the drawer fronts to make sure those were protected as well. back the wood filler and then I used my hardware jig to drill new hardware holes in the drawers. I got some hardware off Amazon and then attached it and here is the final result. dresser, I had originally seen a photo of a dresser online that could be bought for $1,800. And I just really wasn't willing to pay that much. And my whole philosophy is if you can do it for cheaper, why not give it a try? So I was able to spend $120 total, including the dresser and all of the materials to make and recreate the same, well, very similar look of the same dresser. And I was able to do it for $120. Then I I was able to sell that dresser and actually my best friend was the one who ended up buying it. I sold it for $550, giving me a total profit of $430. On the second day of Flipmas, I grabbed these green chairs that I found at Goodwill for $15 each. I wanted to go ahead and rip the skirts off because those legs underneath are just dying to be revealed. I used my scissors and pliers to rip off that skirt. This is one of the fastest slips that I have ever come across. Any velvet chair that you can find is, that is in good shape, definitely pick it up, take off the skirt, clean it up, and sell it. Mm -hmm. 
After I ripped off the skirts to both chairs, I took my little green Bissell vacuum and cleaned all of the upholstery. This is a really important step in these flips because you need to be sure and get all of that dust out of the surface of those chairs. It's also important to list this in your listing when you're selling these. That way the new owner knows that it is gonna be really nice and clean. After those chairs were done drying, it was time to list them on Facebook Marketplace. And the same day I listed them, I had someone interested. They came that same day and I was able to sell these chairs for $300. So that is a total profit of $270 for really minimal work. It took me about two hours to flip those two chairs. That's a pretty great return on investment, if you ask me. On the third day of Flipmas, I grabbed this $60 dresser that I had gotten several months back on Facebook Marketplace. I cleaned the surface of the drawers to get all the dust off and to make sure that the paint would adhere nicely to the surface. This is one of the most important steps of flipping furniture. Also, make sure to get inside of the dresser as well. I marked the drawers so that I could put them back in their respective spots once everything was painted. I took my surf prep sander and began sanding with the Pro Foam Pads. These are able to contour to any curvature that you might have on your furniture. All the information is listed down below in the description for any of the products that I mentioned today. I sanded the top portion of the dresser because for this piece, I went for a dipped furniture look. That means that I needed to tape off the top portion and then I used a top coat to make sure that I got a very precise line. I used the color Wilderness in Lily Moon Paint's opulent all-in-one formula. This paint is just a dream and if you haven't tried it, be sure to try it out very soon. Stick around because there's going to be a giveaway at the end. Also, I sanded the top three drawers to raw wood and then gave the rest of the painted areas one more coat of this deep emerald green. I removed the tape and look at that crisp line. This is exactly why you wanna put that top coat before you paint anything against some tape. Then I put the drawers back in and top coated the raw wood areas so that it wouldn't get any oils seeping down into it. And here's the final result. personally really liked this dresser. I really liked the dipped look, but there's been a lot of mixed feelings both here on YouTube as well as over on my Instagram. We posted a reel over there and you know, that's okay. People have different tastes of furniture, but apparently my market isn't really going for it. I currently have it listed at $450 on Facebook Marketplace. So I'll probably lower the price maybe in a few weeks or so, but I also wanna know your thoughts. How would you change the look of this dresser without doing too much more work? Should I paint it all again? Should I add some furniture legs? I don't really wanna add hardware because I think there's a lot going on already on the front of the dresser, but I would love to know your thoughts down below in the comments. On the fourth day of Flipmas, I grabbed this French Provincial dresser from my storage unit and brought it home to get straight to work. I love French Provincial dressers, and so when I found this one on Facebook Marketplace and it was right up the road, I had to have it for $75. I removed all of the hardware and set it aside for later because I like the hardware on these French Provincial pieces to stay original. This is just part of the look of these types of dressers. I cleaned down the whole dresser with Dixie Belle's White Lightning Cleaner. 
This is a degreaser and it just gets all of that dust, dirt, and grime off of the surface. Then, since this was a beginner friendly flip, I took my Surf Prep Rad Pad and just hand sanded the surface of the whole dresser. You don't always have to have a big honking sander. Sometimes all it needs is a brief hand sand to roughen up the surface. I removed all of the drawers and cleaned inside and behind them as well. Then I took Dixie Belle's silk paint in the color Black Sands and painted on the first coat. I'm using the Dixie Belle Scarlet brush, which just really fits into your hand and it's super easy to work with the silk paint. When you're using silk paint, you wanna make sure that you're not going over the same place with the paint over and over too many times or else it won't self-level like it's supposed to. I went ahead and did a light sand over the surface where I had painted just to knock back any texture. Then I did a second coat with the same color for full coverage. And this paint has a top coat built in so I didn't need to worry about doing that. I grabbed the hardware and used gold gilding wax from Dixie Belle to freshen up the hardware. I put all the drawers back and here is the final result. I am really pleased with how this French Provincial dresser turned out. Like I said at the beginning of this flip, I absolutely love French Provincial dressers. They can literally go in any color and look great. This has not had any bites on it just yet, but I do have it listed at $450 over on Facebook Marketplace. So I'm crossing my fingers that now that the holiday season is over, I will get some hits on that dresser because I don't want it to just stay in my storage unit for very much longer. I think someone really needs it in their home. Let me know what you guys think of that dresser below in the comments as well. On the fifth day of Flipmas, I flipped these really trashed dressers. I got them for free from a follower and they did need quite a bit of cleanup. So the first thing I did was I removed the hardware and got straight to cleaning. I used Dixie Belle's White Lightning to get down deep into the surface and I cleaned off all the dirt and grime. These were used for a children's craft room, so there were lots of paint splatters all over the surface as well. I took my Surf Prep sander and stripped back the tops of the dressers since there were several gouges and the furniture finish was really failing. I took my wood filler and filled any veneer gouges and then I taped around the drawers where I didn't want to get any of the black paint. Then I primed with Dixie Belle's Boss, which is a stain blocker, and I sanded back the wood filler on the bases of the dresser. I also primed the bases of the dresser to block any bleed through that could potentially happen. I painted with Dixie Belle's Silk Paint in the color Anchor, and I also painted the drawers with Anchor as well. After the drawers were painted, I sanded back the legs to raw wood. I gave the bases of the dresser one more coat of black, and then I attempted to save the wood in the middle of the drawers, but you'll see in the end that it really just didn't work out the way that I was hoping. I was planning on staining the middle of the drawers, but in the end, they just kind of looked like footballs. I stained the legs with the color Tennessee Whiskey from Lily Moon's Smoky Gel Stain. I also stained the drawers. I reattached the legs and then I put the drawers in the dresser. This is where I was like, oh my gosh, those are footballs on the front of the drawers. Not good. So I went ahead and painted those black like to match the rest of the drawers. I sprayed the hardware gold and let it dry. Then I reattached the original hardware and had to drill a couple of new holes for the bottom drawers since the original pieces were missing. Here is the final result.
You guys, I am so stoked with the way that these turned out. I think that they definitely went from trash to treasure and I listed them on Facebook Marketplace for $750 for the pair. I had someone reach out from Kansas City and they were like, you know, I don't know, this might be a long shot, but how would you feel about making a delivery? So I talked with Neiman and we ended up delivering this set for an additional $250 down to Kansas City. It's just about two and a half hours away from us. So really not too bad of a trip. We just made a day trip out of it. I sold them for a total of $1,000 and after getting them for free from a follower, and putting some time and uh, materials into it, and then also the trip down and back, we spent about $150, giving us a total profit of $850. On the sixth day of Flipmas, I grabbed this tall dresser from Goodwill for $60. I wanted to see if white furniture was still in style, so I got straight to work and removed the hardware from the drawers. Then I cleaned with my good old Dawn dish soap and I dried the surface as well. I took my surf prep sander with a 120 grit and roughened up the surface of the entire dresser so that the paint could really adhere. Then I wiped back the dust that was created and I got out my spray tent and my Wagner sprayer to spray the first coat of primer. For the primer, I used Dixie Belle's White Boss. This is a stain blocking primer and will really help make sure that it doesn't bleed through since there were some spaces that I had sanded down to raw wood. Sprayers make the process go a lot faster, so definitely check out the description for more information about the sprayer. The next day, once it was dry, I took my Surf Prep Rad Pad and smoothed out where I had primed the two coats of primer. Then I used Dixie Belle Silk Paint in the color Salt Water, which is just a bright white, and then I sprayed this on as well. This took two coats for full coverage, so in total, we got about four coats of primer and paint on this dresser. White paint is definitely going to take more applications than some other colors. I taped off the top so that I could do my classic look on the top here, which is the smoked glaze. So I used Baja Gray in the silk paint line by Dixie Belle. And then while that was drying, I went ahead and made sure to paint the edges of the drawers that I had missed the first time. I grabbed my smoked glaze and painted it on the top and wiped it back with the lint-free cloth. I love the way this smoked glaze makes the top look. I reattached the hardware on each drawer and here's the final result. When I painted this dresser, I was trying to see if white furniture was still in style, and apparently it's kind of phasing out of style. Well, at least in my market. A lot of you guys said that you still sell white furniture like hotcakes, which is great. So maybe do a little experiment in your area. Mine is still listed on Facebook Marketplace for $410. So again, I may be lowering the price here in a couple of weeks, or I might just hold out a little bit longer since the holidays are over. We'll see. If you're interested in any of the profits for the pieces I haven't yet sold, be sure to head over to Instagram and we will update you over there in real time when we sell everything.
On the seventh day of Flipmas, I put together some IKEA furniture. There were two nightstands and then the IKEA Tarva dresser. This took about four and a half hours of assembling, but once it was assembled, I was ready to get to work. These are solid pieces of pine furniture. So I did take my sander and smooth out the surface just a tad bit so that the paint would really adhere nicely. I cut the wallpaper that I was going to be attaching to the front of the drawers to size and then I attached it. It was a pre-pasted wallpaper, so I dumped it in a bucket of water and then I stuck it to the front of each drawer. This was a little bit of a tedious job, but once I got the hang of it, it was quite simple. They ended up having to dry all night long. It was a little bit time consuming, but definitely necessary. While those were drying, I taped off the inside of the dresser and I primed the spots that were going to be painted with Lily Moon's Eclipse Primer. Again, this is raw wood, so I wanted to make sure that no stains would be popping through since that can happen from the tannins in the wood. Once the wallpaper was dry the next day, I took my sander and just sort of trimmed off the extra wallpaper that was dangling over the edge of each drawer. Then I grabbed my sprayer and used the color Cades Cove by Lily Moon in her opulent all-in-one paint line. I used my Wagner sprayer, which really allowed me to get a great coverage and a very smooth finish. In total, I needed two coats of this green, and in between coats, I did sand just very lightly on the flat surfaces so that I could smooth everything out. I did a water-based gel stain on the top and the legs of the dresser and the nightstands. That way, I could take some of the yellow tones out of the pine. But I did want to keep it a natural color, so I used the color Natural Cork in Lily Moon's Smoky Gel Stain. I went ahead and drilled some holes for the new hardware that I found on Amazon, and then I put all the drawers in and attached the new hardware. Here's the final result. I could not be happier with the way that this set turned out. This was definitely a passion project, so I really wasn't looking to earn a huge killing on this set once I sold it on Facebook Marketplace. All in all, the furniture cost me about $500 and all of the materials added up to around 50. So after being in at $550, I ended up selling the entire set for $725, still giving me a total profit of $175. On the eighth day of Flipmas, I grabbed this Lane Cedar chest for $35 off of Facebook Marketplace, and I cleaned the surface to get rid of any grease or grime. Then I took my surf prep sander and sanded down the top to raw wood using an 80 grit sandpaper. I removed the base of the cedar chest using my Ryobi electric screwdriver and then I pried it off the rest of the way. I had a look in mind that didn't include this outdated base. 
I filled in the original hardware holes with Bondo and then got to cutting these molding pieces that I was going to be putting on front of the chest. Once I got all of the pieces cut, I went to attach some new legs on the bottom of the cedar chest to elevate it off the ground just a tad bit. I got these legs on Amazon and installed the brackets for all four legs in the corners. If you're interested in exactly how I installed these legs, be sure to check out the link in the description to the original playlist, which contains the original video. It was time to sand back the Bondo and glue on the trim molding pieces, which I also used my brad nailer for, for just a little bit of extra adhesion. I sanded back the wood filler that I had used to fill in the holes from the brad nailer, and then I attached one more trim piece around the bottom edge. Here it is before it gets painted. And then of course I taped off the cedar so that I wouldn't get any paint on the edges. I used Lily Moon's Eclipse Primer in the color white just to make sure that no stain was going to be popping through since it was gonna be a lighter color. Then I took Ivory Coast from her opulent paint line and whitewashed the top of the cedar chest. I really liked how this lightened up the wood, but yet you could still see the wood grain. I needed to do a little bit more of the filling of those hardware holes, and then I sanded back the Bondo one more time and primed once again. Last but not least, I painted the whole chest with Ivory Coast. Once again, all of the information to the products will be listed down below in the description. I did two coats of the Ivory Coast, removed the tape, and look at that crisp line. I reattached the top lid and the hinges, and then I also did go ahead and remove the clasp locking mechanism since those have been recalled for safety reasons. Here is the final result. Love this cedar chest and I think that it really got modernized by just lightening up the color of the wood and also elevating it off the ground just a tad bit. I sold this piece on Facebook Marketplace within hours of listing it for $225. So after spending about $80 on this chest and all of the materials, I was able to earn a total profit of $145. On the ninth day of Flipmas, I grabbed this table from a thrift store for just $15. It was pretty worn down and definitely needed some love. I wasn't 100% on the type of table that this was, but I figured it could use a little makeover. I started by cleaning the surface with Simple Green and got all the dust and grime off. Then I took my Surf Prep Sander with an 80 grit and stripped back the failing finish on the top of the table. It was a little bit time consuming, but totally worth the end result. I decided that I was going to turn this into a coffee table since it was pretty awkward with the height it was currently at. So I went ahead and cut off 10 inches of the legs using my Ryobi circular saw. It was the perfect height after I cut the legs down. So I decided that I wanted to go full send on stripping back the finish of the entire table. I used a 80 grit sandpaper for this job.
Once I had all the original finish stripped back, I used the color Saddle Up in Lily Moon's Smoky Gel Stain. First, I misted with water and then I added the Saddle Up Gel Stain. After that, I wiped it back with a lint-free cloth. I did this to the legs, the drawer fronts, and the sides of the table. For the top of the table, I used the color White Oak Barrel and did the same process. I really like the contrast that the top has with the bottom. I taped off the cane area in the drawer fronts and then I painted it with the color Sandbar from Dixie Belle. And here's the final look. I really love how this table came out and I'm so glad that I decided to chop off those legs like you guys suggested over on Instagram. I had this listed on Facebook Marketplace for $225 and after just a few days of being listed, I ended up selling it for full price, thus giving me a total profit of $200. On the 10th day of Flipmas, I found this mid-century modern dresser at Goodwill for $30. It was very run down and definitely needed a little bit of work. So I got straight to work and I removed the hardware from the dresser. Then I sprayed it down with Simple Green and gave it a clean. I just got all of the dirt and dust off of it so that I was ready to complete the makeover. I sprayed QCS, which is a stripper, on the top drawer to strip back the furniture finish. I really like this stripper for certain pieces and it doesn't have any harsh chemicals, so you don't even have to wear a mask and you can use it indoors. Then the bottom drawer slide needed a little bit of attention. I pried it off with the large screwdriver and then I replaced it with a drawer slide that I found on Amazon. I used some wood glue and my brad nailer and the drawer was as good as new. I peeled off some of the stickers and I sanded back the finish on the bottom three drawers. For this, I just used a 120 grit and it seemed to do the job just fine. I also did a scuff sand on the remainder of the dresser and removed the legs since I would be stripping those back as well. After spraying another layer of QCS on the top drawer, I was able to strip back that finish and it looked really nice. Then I used the color Ocean Shore from Lily Moon Paint's Opulent All-in-One Paint Line. This paint goes on so smooth and it has virtually no brush stroke marks. Once that coat was on and drying, I took my 80 grit sandpaper and sanded back the legs since they were pretty scratched up. Then I used Tennessee Whiskey Gel Stain and gave those legs a new color. I also stained the top drawer just a tad bit to match the legs. Then I sanded back some of the spots that have filled in with some wood filler. and then did a second coat of Ocean Shore. Each drawer had the same contact paper in it, so I removed it and I ended up being sticky on the bottom of the drawer. So I took my sander and I sanded out all the stickiness so that it would be all nice and fresh. I reattached the legs and I also put on new hardware.
And here's the final result. It was a very simple flip that only took me three or four hours to complete. In case you guys were wondering, because I got a lot of comments on the original video, that top drawer is really easy to open even though it doesn't have a handle on it. All you do is slide your fingers underneath and there is a little space and you just pull it right out. If there was supposed to be hardware on it, I definitely would have attached that, but there were no original hardware holes, so that's why I didn't put any hardware on there. I listed that piece on Facebook Marketplace for $300, and then that same day, I ended up selling it for the full asking price of $300, and after material cost and the cost of the dresser, I came away with a total profit of $255. On the 11th day of Flipmas, I grew grabbed this dresser that I got for $100 on Facebook Marketplace. It was in pretty good shape, but really did need a little bit of work. I got to work by removing the hardware and labeling each drawer so that I didn't get them mixed up when I put them back in later. Then I cleaned the entire surface and the inside of the dresser using Simple Green to remove all of the dirt, grease, and grime. Then I rinsed as well and peeled back some of the veneer that was flaking off of the side. I filled in the spaces with Bondo, which is a two-part epoxy and it's a hardening substance so that once you apply it, it will harden within minutes. You do have to work a little bit fast. While that was hardening, I worked on one of the drawer slides that was giving me a little bit of trouble. I replaced the glide and the slide so that the drawer would work nicely. Then I filled in the original hardware with some Bondo as well. And then the Bondo on the dresser had dried and hardened really nicely, so I grabbed my surf prep sander and sanded it back smooth. Typically, Bondo will need a couple of coats, so I applied one more coat before sanding back the hardware holes and sanding back the finish on the drawers as well. Once everything was sanded down, Bondo-wise, I did a scuff sand on the entire surface of the dresser and wiped back the dust. I primed the dresser to block any bleed through. I did two coats, the first one being white and the second one being gray. Then I wrapped the drawers in plastic and I painted the base of the dresser with the color Green Iceberg from Lily Moon Paint. It is a nice soft green that I absolutely love. Now it's time for the pour over. I poured in six different colors of Lily Moon paint and diluted them a tiny bit with some water. Then I decided to pour them directly on the drawer fronts in any random order. I took my hair dryer on a cool setting and I blew the paint around, just kind of let it do its own thing, adding colors where I thought they needed to go. This dried for just about 24 hours before I took the plastic off and did a second coat of green iceberg on the base of the dresser and the middle three drawers. Then 
Then I sanded the edges of the pour over drawers so that they could slide in and out very nicely. I drilled new hardware holes for all the drawers and I top coated it everywhere with satin clear coat. I ended up going with hardware piece number three and I really absolutely love the way that they elevate the look of this piece after everything was attached and reassembled. Here is the final result. This is absolutely by far my favorite flip to date. I'm not kidding you guys. I just, this one definitely has a special place in my heart and I really hope that very soon someone in my market will also have the same feelings about this dresser. I've had it listed for about a week now and it's been over the holiday season. So I'm hoping that now that the holidays are over again, I will be able to sell this dresser. I put about $175 worth of work into the dresser. So I've got it listed at $900 on Facebook Marketplace. So I will let you know when that sells and for how much. On the 12th day of Flipmas, I grabbed this orange oak dining set from Facebook Marketplace for $60. I cleaned the surface of the table and the chairs, and then I got to sanding the top of the table. I sanded back all of that orange finish because it's pretty outdated. And personally, I just really don't like that shade of wood. I used an 80 grit to sand back the finish and then I smoothed it out one more time with a 120 grit. I cleaned the chairs and then I sanded the surface with a foam abrasive pad and my surf prep sander so that I could sort of roughen up the surface of the chairs and the paint will adhere really well. I also did this to the base of the table. You're just an ambitious proletarian questioning what it all means now that you found out that it doesn't mean anything to be right. I set up my Wagner spray tent and used the color Deep Sea by Dixie Bell in their silk mineral paint line to cover all the surfaces except for the tabletop. I ended up doing two full coats and it came out absolutely flawless. I will never ever not use my sprayer when it comes to painting tables and chairs. If you haven't invested in a sprayer, I highly recommend doing so now and you can learn how to do it. I have several beginner sprayer videos for you guys, so check out my channel to check them out. I taped off the top of the table so that I wouldn't get any blue paint on it, and then I sprayed the base of the table as well. For the first time, for the last time. For the tabletop, I mixed a couple of Lily Moon's smoky gel stains which are water-based stains. I highly prefer them over oil-based stains. I use natural cork and saddle up to complement each other and sort of create some depth with the darker color. I really wanted to take some more of that yellowy, orangey tone out of the wood. So first I applied the natural cork and then the saddle up with a paintbrush and I wiped it back with a lint-free cloth. After I let that dry, I sprayed on a top coat with a satin clear coat. I did three total coats of the top coat so that that way they could get the most protection possible since it's going to be in someone's home and it will be a place of high traffic. Here is the final result. And I 
I'm so excited because I was able to donate this table to a family in need this holiday season. I connected with a local organization that had a family already in need of a dining set. Future Lauren here interrupting your program because as you can see, we still have the dining set here. We had full intentions of delivering it to the family that we chose for the receival of this table and chairs, but they are actually out of town until the beginning of January. So we weren't able to deliver it just yet, but we will be doing that in the first of the month. So be sure and get subscribed down below. Stay tuned, we will still be showing you guys us delivering this table and chairs. Now back to your regular scheduled program. Wow, what a December. I cannot believe that we shared 12 videos with you guys. To be completely transparent, I did start flipping at the beginning of November. So we did have a tiny bit of a backlog of content for you guys, but it was just so much fun for all three of us, including me, Neiman, and our editor, Harrison. Again, I know you guys did it last week, but be sure and shout them out in the comments down below. I know you see me here on the screen most of the time, but they play an astronomical part of this team. Us three could not be doing what we are doing to the extent of what we are doing without each other. So show them some love down below. And now what you guys are probably waiting for, like Lauren just spit it out, the total profit that I earned during the 12 days of Flipmas. Remember, I haven't quite sold all the pieces. I think there's four that still are on the market. And then of course the table and chairs I am I donated. So for the total profit of the 12 days of Flipmas, I was able to make $2,325. That is absolutely amazing. And if that doesn't show you guys that this can just be a extra side hustle or just a little bit of extra income for you, or maybe you wanna turn it into a full-time job, then I don't know what else will. If you're interested in getting started or you've already been started, you want to keep listening because we have two amazing giveaways that we are partnering with two different paint brands. They are gonna be giving away $100 each to their websites. The first one is going to be Lily Moon Paint. If you joined me throughout the 12 days of Flipmas, you saw me using Lily Moon Paint throughout a lot of the flips. I used their opulent all-in-one paint. I used their regular mineral paint line. I used their gel stains, which I love, and they're water-based, and it's just amazing because oil-based stains just are messy and they don't dry fast enough, and I could go on and on about that, but I won't. The other giveaway we are hosting here is from Dixie Bell Paint Company. They are also gonna be giving away $100 to their website so that you can also grab $100 worth of their products over there. During the 12 days of Flipmas, I used Dixie Bell's Boss. I used their Silk Paint, which is my favorite of their lines. They have a few different lines like chalk paint and also some clay paint, but the Silk Paint has it all encompassed in one formula, which I love. I also really enjoy using Dixie Bell's satin clear coat to top coat a majority of my pieces. So all of that will be available on their website. Links are down below in the description. If you're wondering how you can enter in both of these giveaways, I am going to tell you how right now. The first thing you have to do is get subscribed down here to Furniture Flipping Teachers YouTube channel, as well as both respective paint companies. You need to subscribe to Lily Moon Paints YouTube channel, as well as Dixie Bell Paint Company's YouTube channel. Last but not least, you are gonna go down below in the description over to furnitureflippingteacher.com and put your email in there to receive notifications for when our website goes live. In order to get entered into this giveaway, we need your email address because we are avoiding scammers. On YouTube, it's really difficult to avoid scammers, and so we want to personally reach out to you via email 
if you are the giveaway winner. So we have to have your email address in order for you to get notified. So those are the three things that you need to do in order to get entered into the giveaway. Also, I would love to know your favorite flip from the 12 days of Flipmas. I of course have mine being the pour over green dresser. That is going to be a hard one to beat, but I might try to beat it in 2023. Thank you guys so much for watching and sticking with us through the 12 days of Flipmas. We really appreciate your support that you have been giving us for the past two years and we cannot wait for 2023 we have so much awesomeness planned for both you guys and us and we just cannot wait to share so again be sure you're subscribed down below i hope you guys have an amazing new year and we will see you on thursday for another video thanks so much for watching and i'll see you on the flip side